Herzlich willkommen zu den heutigen Vorträgen live aus der Bitwäscherei hier in Zürich. Äh, wenn ihr Fragen habt, die ihr zu den Vorträgen unseren Speakern stellen wollt, dann verwendet doch bitte den Chat. Den Link dazu findet ihr unterhalb dieses Livestreams hier. Äh, mein erster Gast heute ist Vara. Er wird seinen Vortrag auf Englisch halten, deswegen wechsle ich nun auch die Sprache. Um, Vardon will tell us about media and how things change in media. Um, more precisely, why, need, why we need to reinvent media and how. And now I'm looking forward to learn more about this. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure and great honor to be able to speak in front of you, even if it's remotely and I don't see you directly. Um, who am I? My name is Vardon. And I have a problem. My problem looks a little bit like that. I consume a lot of content, uh, media that feels like noise, content that doesn't have a lasting impact on me, content that maybe targets my emotion and feels good in the moment, similar uh, to junk food uh, that also feels good in the moment, but it just makes you feel empty afterwards. So content that is really, we call it clickbait, content that doesn't have any substance, content that is really like junk food. Um, and I ask myself often, what would the world look like if we had, if the most prominent content was actually um, content that is transformational, content that makes you think content that has this kind of substance. Um, I call it sometimes butterfly content that can have a butterfly effect on your life. I'm sure all of you have experienced that, that you have read something or watched something or listened to something that has really changed how you, maybe how you um, look at something or has really given you a new insight into a topic. So it has really been transformational to you. I ask myself, what would the world look like if we had more of this type of content, if this type of content was the most prominent and not the junk food content. Um, in order to answer that question, what would the world look like in such a case, we have to take a step back and ask ourselves, well, why is it not the case today? Why is the world not like that today? Why does it seem like the content that screams the loudest is the one that is, is heard most? Um, and to answer the question, why is it not the case today, we have to look or to, let's say, follow the money and look at the business model models of uh, the places where we consume media today. And there are two business models that are the most common ones. The most common uh, is the advertisement business model, which you see on this illustration. And you see uh, simplified how this model works. So at the top, you have an intermediary, which can be a platform or uh, an online newspaper, for example. And at the bottom left, you have the advertisers and at the bottom right, the users and uh, creators. So what happens is that the advertisers pay the platform and um, the platform provides a free service with that money to the users. Why um, free in, bra in brackets? Because we don't pay anything financially, but we pay the platform as users with our attention and with clicks. And that's what the platform gives back to the advertisers. So the advertisers pay the platform in order to get our attention and our clicks. And so what's the alternative today? The alternative today are paywalls. And paywalls work like that. Again, you have at the top an intermediary. But this time the users and the creators are split into two groups. Um, and this paywall model is uh, mostly used with online newspapers, for example, where the creators are journalists, for example. So the journalists, they create content for the platform. The platform gives that content to us, the users, and we pay something 
uh, to the platform. The platform takes that money and um, gives a little bit of that to the creators uh, back to the journalists. So it's a classic intermediary model. Now let's look at the good and bad sides of those two models. Um, the good and bad sides about the advertisement model, well first a good thing is that it's very inclusive in the sense that you don't have to pay money in order to get access to the information. You don't have um, to, yeah, to be financially um, invested. You, you can be a part of, of the platform no matter who you are. And you can also be a user and a creator at the same time. So you can publish on the platform as well as consume content. And it's openly accessible generally. So if you think about, I don't know, Twitter, um, the information is not behind the paywall. The information is generally openly accessible um, for everyone. That's the good sides, but the bad sides obviously heavily outweigh and they are tied um, generally to the click rate business model, meaning that the business model uh, has, as a, has this incentive of generating as much clicks as possible, getting as much attention as possible. So that leads to low quality content and to attention and data mining. Why? Because um, it's simply not important how high the quality of the content is as long as it makes us click, as long as it grabs our attention. So it's actually, that's why we get clickbait content because there's a financial incentive um, for the platform to, to do that and to mine our attention and uh, our data, meaning that the more data the platform has on us, the better they can predict what we will click on uh, next. And also, obviously, they work with, alg with the help of algorithms to uh, find out how to best capture our attention. That's what makes those platforms so addictive. Um, it's just the business model that, that provides the incentive for the platforms. It's not that they are evil or something. It's really their financial interest to do that. Um, and that obviously can lead to huge problems because, uh, well, it can be used also for political purposes. All kinds of people or organizations can use uh, this model to pay in order to push their content. And that's how we got to the point where we are on a societal level today. Um, this race to the bottom is exactly because of that. So on top of that, uh, one of the downsides is that the creators don't get any payment or any financial reward, so they also don't have an incentive to provide high quality content. And the platforms that use ad advertisement based models are usually centralized, so you have a central instance that is being paid by the advertisers. Now the good and bad sides about paywalls, well first uh, it's good that the quality of the content is higher because actually someone is uh, willing to spend money on the content. So um, that's one good thing. And the other th good thing is that a part of that money goes to the creators. Um, so for example, the journalists are then paid with the money that the people provide. But the problem with the paywalls is that they are not inclusive, meaning that if you don't have money, you don't get the in information, you're left out. And um, that it also means that the users and creators are not the same. You cannot be uh, as a user a creator at the same time. So you could not say, for example, um, oh, well, I'm going to publish tomorrow at uh, the New York Times or something like that. Um, meaning that the platform decides or the newspaper decides who is a creator and who is a user. And they, the paywalls fragment the web, meaning that they go against the very basic principle of the internet, the open uh, principle, the open uh, accessibility of information. Um, and that fragments the web, it puts content behind, literally behind walls where only people who have money can access it. Um, on top of that, it's not transparent. You pay a paywall, you mean, uh, that mean, uh, I mean you pay um, a monthly sum to a medium and you hope that they will provide you with good content, but you don't pay for like single pieces of content, you pay a monthly sum to the medium. And paywall-based models are usually even more centralized because um, there is uh, the decision lies with the newspaper or the, the platform, the decision who publishes and what, is, what gets published. This decision is, is in the hands of the, of the platform or the newspaper in the, in the business model of paywalls. Now, I've asked the question, what would 
a, a world look like if we had more of this transformational content, more content that really has a super high quality, makes you think, content that provides you with new insight. So in order to have that new world, what would a business model look like to, um, to provide that? Well, it would have to combine the good things of those two models that we have talked about now and with as little of the downsides as possible, meaning that it would have to have the overarching goal of high quality transformational content, as I said. That would have to be the, the big goal, the big incentive um, for, for everyone, every stakeholder in that system. And then everyone who contributes in that system towards that goal of high quality transformational content, everyone who contributes to that should be also financially rewarded so that they have a stake in that goal. Plus, it should be openly accessible, meaning that even if you don't have money, um, you should be able to uh, take part and, and also get the information. It should be inclusive in that sense, and it should also um, enable everyone who wants to also publish to be able to do that. So everybody should be able to also be a creator or a user as they choose. And then it should be decentralized and democratic, meaning that there should not be a central instance that decides you know, what is high quality content, what is published and not. Those should be decisions that should be democratic and um, crowdsourced. So that's actually what we are working on. Um, we call or we, f we think we have found a solution that, is, that could be very interesting. We call it Butterfly without the L, so Butterfly. And um, we call it a crowd filtering system. And you see uh, on this slide uh, how it would work. So at the top left, you have the creators. The creators create content. And this content then goes through a filter with four different stages. And that's actually where the users are. So the people are split into four stages and they filter uh, the noise away and they filter through that noise and they um, actually the content becomes better and better and better. So each uh, person decides for themselves, well, is that piece of content something I want to send to the next stage? Is it transformational? Does it have this butterfly effect on my life? Um, or does it have the potential for that? If yes, I'm going to send it to the next stage. If not, it's not going to go uh, to the next stage. So it's a democratic filter in that sense. Now, you see that stages three and four have a blue collar. And that is because they are the ones who spend money. So the, um, they pay money for what? They pay money for the privilege of getting only this tri high quality, transformational, substantial content. They pay for the privilege of not having to filter through the noise themselves. Other people do that for them and they pay for that work. Um, important is that they only pay for the pieces of content which they think have that transformational um, power, which they think can really have this impact on other people. So they pay only for the content that they send to the next stage. Um, and also very important, the money that they pay is split. So the money is split and it goes first to all the people who have filtered the content for them. So that means if you are in the stage one or two, you consume everything for free. Of course, there's a little bit more noise, little bit more noise in there, but you consume everything for free. Plus you can even make uh, money uh, because you get a little share if you find high quality transformational content that the next stages are gonna gonna pay for and uh, apart from the people who filter the money is also split towards the creators obviously because they created high quality content um, that went through that filter and uh, also a small share goes to the platform for providing the, the uh, infrastructure and the service so every stakeholder, everyone in that system has an incentive of um, high finding and, and producing high quality content, transformational content that has really an impact in, in others people's, other people's lives. Um, very important, you cannot come on the platform and say, oh, okay, I want to be at stage four directly. I'm going to pay, no problem, but I want to be at stage four. Not possible. Everyone has to start at stage one. So it's really democratic in a sense that you have to start at the stage one and you have to prove that you provide 
the system with value. You have to prove that you can do that and that you are willing to do that and only then can you go uh, to the next stage. And that's a democratic decision, uh, not something that I or, or the platform decides. It's, it's democratically, um, it's a, uh, yeah, just a de democratic decision-making process. And what else makes the platform democratic is that there's a separation of powers, meaning there's four different stages and none of those stages have more power than the other. People are split in those stages, so no one can be at all the stages at the same time. It's different stages, different people. And that means that, uh, for example, also the stages three and four who pay, they don't have more um, power than the others because they get only to choose from the things that have been provided to them by the stages one and two. So it's really democratic in the sense of there is a separation of power. The users have to go through that transformation process themselves. That's also democratic. Nobody can come and say, I want to be at stage four directly. And it's decentralized, meaning that the crowd decides and, um, and the people decide. Uh, and it's not something where a central instance decides what is good or bad, transformational or not. Um, and then there's the equality of opportunity, which is also very important. Everyone can be a creator. Everyone can publish to the platform. And if they provide a story, if they, if they have something to share that is really of value for other people, then it doesn't matter where they are or who they are if they live in a so-called third world country. Um, because I truly believe that today um, the most important stories are not, have not been heard yet. Because in the paywall-based model, well, many people don't have the opportunity to publish at, at such an, uh, uh, a newspaper, for example, or such a publication. And in the advertisement-based model, uh, the important stories are really drowning or being drowned out in the noise of, of everyone else. There's really no um, quality filter in there. So I truly believe that this could be a system that leads to also those voices um, being heard. So it's, it's a, a democratic uh, um, system in every sense. That also means that... Um, W w or well let's go to the first stage here that's what we're working on right now so that means that you can go at the mo in in this moment to butterfly.me again butterfly without the l butterfly.me is the website where you if you open it you see a screenshot here you see the stage one actually so um you get the question what are the most life-changing things you've ever read on the web and then like please think hard and and try to provide other people with value. If you have something that has had this kind of butterfly effect on your life, share that with the platform. And if people democratically also decide that they see value in that, you will be promoted to the next stage. And um, very important, this is a project that is non-profit. As you have seen, the system is self-sustaining. It doesn't need any third party investment or something. So that means it's a community project. It should be as democratically as possible. So that's why um, we're, we're really looking for people, maybe people like you, who can help us with that, who want to be a part of that, because the more people uh, are a part of it, the more democratic it actually becomes. So um, with that, I think I will give back the word and if you have any questions or also have any feedback, please also feel free to uh, reach us uh, either through our website butterfly.me or at support at butterfly.me, which is our email address. Feel, please feel free um, to reach out to us and now I'm available for, yeah, if you have any, any questions. Thank you for your interesting talk and this kind of invention you just presented to us. I'm pleased to hear. Um, maybe for all of you, again, the hints that you can ask questions directly now to Verlon um, by using our chat channel. I will try to ask them uh, for you to him. Um, but let me start with uh, my question first. So um, you're saying um, that uh, um, there are many stages 
And then my question would be, um, would it, how would you, how would then the comp pass on? Would it be a majority vote or can, can one user decide if an article or a news bite in a broader sense of the video or whatever is then in and um, can pass the next stage? Well, it's a decision, uh, obviously, of everyone, but then it, uh, we plan to introduce something that, uh, or we plan to introduce actually randomness to prevent bias. That means that it's not like if you have 100 people, um, it's not like the case that if 51% of those people don't like the content, it doesn't go through. We add a little randomness, meaning that um, maybe the content is not shown to all 100 people directly, but maybe only to 40. And then if the majority of those 40 randomly chosen people um, think that the content should go to the next stage, then it's actually uh, being sent to the next stage. So we want to prevent with that like a... Um, let's say that the majority always can rule. There's a certain element of randomness in it. Right, but this would then need to um, pass two times. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, because it's two stages, right? Well, no, actually, like, um, it's every person uh, takes a vote, but maybe out of those 40 people that have randomly been chosen to be shown that content, if the majority of those decide that it should go to the next content, uh, next stage, then the content will go to the next stage. So it's actually just one vote that, that the people take at that stage. All right. Um, now, a question from the web we get. So, um, first, um, person is, is kind of criticizing a bit that you're still um, kind of fragmenting the web in stages three and four. Well, um, the information, it's not fragmenting because at the stages one and two, um, where everything is freely accessible for everyone, you have the information accessible for everyone. So it's not fragmenting in the sense that uh, there, the whole all pieces of content are there at the stages one and two, freely available for everyone, but then they get filtered in the sense that like uh, people decide what they find valuable or not, and then uh, at the stages three and four you only have like a subset of all this available information, and people actually pay for the privilege of only seeing that, because uh, the crowd has decided that this is the most transformational content and, and uh, the people at stages three and four, they maybe don't want to get through, through all the noise, they don't want to see all the information, they only want to see what is important to them because maybe they don't have a lot of time or they, they choose to spend money in that sense. Um, but it's not a fragmentation because everything is freely available for everyone. So it would mean that if you don't want to pay for it, you would need to uh, uh, very well, the, the work that you do is something that you get paid for. So you, it's not a lot of work. After each, each piece of content, you just have to decide is it something that uh, has a transformational or has the potential to be transformational or not. That's the only work you have to do after each piece of content. And that's uh, really literally a, a matter of seconds. But you can, if you choose things that really prove to be transformational and of value for other people as well, you get financially rewarded. And the other like downside uh, that you have when you're uh, on the free stages is that you have a little bit more noise. But that's the same, that's the case today as well in the advertisement-based models. Even worse, I would say, because on this, uh, on this um, platform, there's pretty much only people who have that aligned interest in finding transformational content, finding things that are not polarizing, not this kind of clickbait uh, content. So, um, yeah, I think you definitely have a lot of upsides even in the free uh, stages where you don't pay anything. All right. Um, I'm not sure if I get the question 100%, but maybe you do. So the, so the question is, the information is already there now but people's feelings are, are the problem, so you are drawing um, attention to the wrong posts. Is it possible in our system that the most emotional information prevails? Oh, okay, so that's like the classic uh, question, what comes first? Do the people want sensational content or is it that uh, we're so used to bad content that uh, we don't know anything else? And I'm deeply, I, I'm, 
really deeply convinced that none of us actually enjoys uh, seeing this kind of junk food and trashy content. Some, uh, some content can be uh, entertaining and that's, that's really no problem. In that system, nobody says what is good or bad. You can also reward entertaining content or content that doesn't always have to be very, I don't know, rational or, or something. But it's about providing value. And I'm sure like we've, you've all experienced that, that you, uh, you've read articles where you just thought like, I, I just wasted my time. Uh, and so that's what we would try to, to get rid of in that system. And I, I really, maybe I'm, I'm uh, believing too much in the good side of people, but I, I really don't think um, that, that we actually enjoy the mess we're in right now. And that I, like everyone I talk to uh, has a similar problem in the sense that they feel overwhelmed and, and it's really this race to the bottom that we're in, especially with the advertising based model. I think it's really time for for something else and a time for something that that has at its core the interest of transforming, transforming people, but also then society at large. Um, so that would be my, my answer to that question. Um, now we have three questions from two people, but they are at least to me very strong links. So I, I formalize all three together. So the question is, how are you reaching out uh, to people um, to initialize the system first? And then related to this, um, how can you make sure that the initial stage is not biased because um, you reach out, for example, only to people like the one from which are now listening to RSD3 or similar, so that you have here a broader sense. And while that's probably the same problem as the next question, which is a bit more evil illustrated, so how do you prevent the system of being controlled by bots? So if you have in one layer all biased people or even biased bots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so the first question, well, obviously we have, we have to start somewhere and I really think that I'm in the right place uh, to tell you, all of you, uh, that, th that idea because I think it's important who is on the, on the platform first because the one thing that is important in the beginning is that you are open-minded in the sense that um, you look at the quality of the content and everything in the system is designed to enhance that. So for example, the user transformation, um, or maybe let's let's come to that uh, later. But uh, there there is like there are many features that that should prevent uh, this type of bias. And the the most important one is uh, certainly the the user transformation, meaning that everyone has to start at those first stages. And then the more people come on the platform, the less the 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 bias of each individual matters, right? So the more people come on the platform, the less uh, it will become important who is on the platform right now. Um, but in the sense that uh, how we reach out, we start reaching out to people like you in the beginning. So you heard now about this project and we really invite you to be part of this project right now. And we're not advertising this in, in other circles at the moment. But the more people come on it, the, the more democratic it gets and the less it is important who is on the platform right now. Um, and then the, the question with the bots, um, well, you, the system has this kind of score that like where the system is, looks at, uh, for example, if you're a creator, the content that you provide, or if you uh, are a filterer, the content that you filter, it deter or it looks at how far it goes, like how much uh, uh, of the content that you send to the next stage is then sent to the next stage. And if, if you're a bot and, and uh, the system detects that, for example, this uh, score is really low, like all the people in the next stage uh, uh, determine your content to be really, really bad and don't let it to the next stage, then the system would, would warn you and maybe block you for a certain time so that you cannot, be, um, you cannot introduce new con content into the platform in order to prevent spamming. Um, and then also, um, there is a, a report function where like if you feel like there is uh, content which is spammy or, or you feel like it's something that a bot has, has um, brought to the platform, you can also report that, but it's not reported to a central instance. 
it uh, chooses randomly a certain amount of people who, it, uh, who are shown the content and then it's a democratic decision of this random set of people if the content uh, stays on the platform or not. So it's kind of a democratic um, decentralized report function as well. So that's, that's one aspect. And then also we have the aspect of time. I haven't talked about that right now because it's actually important, but it's, it's like a technical detail that uh, we have a time lag in the system. So uh, each decision you take is, is recorded on the system, but not immediately um, done in the system, implemented in the system, meaning that uh, Butterfly will ask you after a few days, will show you again the content and ask you, hey, do you remember you have uh, wanted to send that content to the next stage? Do you even still remember that article or video, or whatever it was? If not, it's probably not been transformational. If yes, do you really still want to send it to the next stage? So this time lag also prevents kind of uh, bots from immediately doing something or, or it, it um, enables or it en enhances, the, uh, increases the chances that people, uh, that we all really take a step back and ask ourselves, is it really something that has had now over, over those days, over this time, an impact on my life? Or is it just something that has made me in that moment feel good or I, I wanted to reward it in that moment, but today I don't think it's, it's the case anymore. And that time lag would also increase, um, in my opinion, uh, highly increase the, the chances that the content that goes to the next stage is really, people have thought about it and, and really carefully chosen to send it to the next stage. So speaking of time, there is another question related to it, um, which sees this probably a bit of a weaker. So the question is sometimes speed is crucial. Let us consider a security vulnerability um, publication, of course. So passing all four stages takes time and you might miss the news if you only subscribe to stage four. How do you deal with that? Yes, that's definitely, I mean, that's uh, a disadvantage of every democracy, right? That's uh, why it takes time. Decision making takes time in every democracy. And um, it's something that you, I don't think you can prevent it with that system. It just takes time. And I think it's actually a feature that it takes time because it's more, I think, um, it probably it would not be the right platform to publish or at least not in that, in that form that I, I presented now it wouldn't be the right platform to publish a security vulnerability straight away when maybe you could alert the public uh, easy, more easily uh, through today's social media or something like that. But I also believe that if the security vulnerability that you would, would, um, would share with the world, that people would actually see that, hey, there's a value in that. We have, we have to make that uh, heard and then it would also go through the, through the stages. Uh, it still would take a little bit of time, but I'm I'm really convinced that it would go through the stages, um, and and of course, uh, sometimes time is critical, and then maybe that would not be the best um, use case. But I think that this feature that or that this aspect that it takes time is actually really a feature because it makes you take a step back and actually really reflect on your on your choice. All right, we're already over time, but um, there are there is one more question which is stated twice, once on Twitter and once in the, um, I don't know, channel here, channel here. Um, so really cool idea, yeah. Um, then I do not understand why do you want everybody um, to start on stage one? So that way you are cutting your target group and get less user or customer. And the person on Twitter has similar concern. Um, it says, um, so if people who are willing to pay basically have a lot of money, they might be um, value their time higher and are not willing to pay more time to go through stage one and two, but they would be willing to pay already for already moderate content in three and four. So All right, so I think um, it's actually very important that I, everyone has to go through the transformation model because it aligns your interest. Only the people who take that time and uh, go through all those stages prove that they are interested in that, uh, in that high overarching goal that the system has. 
uh, only if you prove that you are interested in that, you're allowed to, to proceed in the next stages. That's really essential to that democratic uh, function of the system. And I compare it a bit to Wikipedia, where also you cannot just uh, immediately edit something and it will be uh, edited. You have to take the time. It has to go through different stages. And I think it's actually, that's, that's very important because it also doesn't tie money to uh, to status or something it doesn't uh, it doesn't money does not uh, influence that that uh, decision making process and i think you it, it just aligns the the interests uh, of everyone and it assures the platform or the the system to it helps it to know that the people who go through the stages are really invested in the idea and i think even if you if you have money now and would like to use such a system but don't want to go through through the stages i think you would have to ask yourselves why not you know um just uh, do it provide value and and you will get to the to the uh, next stages and it allows the system to to stay democratic and not to give people who have money an advantage over everyone else so we'll link to this Maybe you can answer it yes or no. It, um, it's a question. Is it also possible to choose to stay on stage one or two? Yes, def definitely. That's something I haven't uh, mentioned, but definitely it's always your own choice if you want to spend money or not. So you can definitely also stay, stay at the stages one and two. You're just, you will be alerted that, hey, you could go to th stage three if you want to, um, but if you don't want to, obviously you don't have to. All right. Thank you very much for this. Uh, Thank you. Um, talk and also the, all the answers to the user's question. So we take a little break here and we are back in about 25 minutes. This is a talk about net politics in Switzerland.